News. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Tim McGonigal. And I'm Keely Van Middendorp. We begin tonight on Firewatch after two fires ignited in Fergus County. The first fire is burning east of Judith Peak. It's about 10 acres in size. The second is burning about eight miles northwest of Winifred, and it's around 1,000 acres in size. Fergus County DES coordinator Ben Phillips says resources are pouring in to fight both fires. The second larger fire ignited around 6 o'clock this evening. An airplane and helicopter continue to work at the scene. Take a look at this video of the scene from a uh, viewer. It shows a large plume of smoke blanketing the skies as heavy winds whip across the area. You can also see a large charred area in the distance and a helicopter working in the uh, air as crews responded on the ground. The viewer says that they live across the Missouri River and could see smoke from their kitchen this evening. There was the plane that flew over and dumped the fire retardant kind of where the same place where the farmers were trying to work up the land there. Like you could see way behind where it had started that it was still just billowing up more and more smoke. So it's like it just keeps on going. And officials say more federal resources are en route to the scene. They should arrive by tomorrow morning. Southeast of Lincoln, a fire sparked in the Dalton Mountain area of Fields Gulch. Helicopters were ordered uh, and uh, uh, planes dropped re uh, water and fire retardant on the blaze. According to the Lincoln Volunteer Fire Rescue Facebook page, the fire was originally estimated at just four acres. It was uh, burning in rugged terrain. Well, another beautiful night. Curtis Grevenitz joins us from the Weather Center. Curtis, uh, winds have started to die down. Yes, thankfully, but uh, you could hear in the videos uh, that we just showed you there that wind that was howling across all of Montana. Fire danger was high and we saw a few of those fires really develop here. Now take a look at the uh, current wind speeds. If you haven't been outside here in a little while, that wind is really beginning to subside here. So that certainly is uh, good news uh, with regards to those fires and uh, firefighting efforts here. However, We've got more wind in the forecast for tomorrow. There you can see uh, where these fires are, northern Fergus County. Uh, that uh, fire produced a smoke plume that extended for at least 100 miles. It was still growing. Probably could uh, see that smoke plume all the way out across Fort Peck Lake. And then the fire around the Lincoln area, not quite as much activity, uh, fortunately, on that fire. For tomorrow, deja blue, meaning another day with wind and higher fire danger. Sunday is going to be a fantastic day. And beyond that, average August weather, not uh, too extreme as far as the heat or the fire danger, but it will be warm and we are still dealing with ongoing fire danger. It is fire season here in Montana. More on the full forecast coming up later on the show. Thanks, Curtis. We'll check back in with you soon. Tonight, health officials announcing the fourth COVID-19 related death in Cascade County. This one is not related to the recent outbreak in Great Falls at a long-term care facility. The individual was a male over the age of 65 with underlying health conditions. This brings the death toll to 72 now. More than 1,500 active cases across the state with 50 here in Cascade County. Hill County sitting with 21 tonight, Glacier County with 17, and remember Remember, the governor's order face coverings are required in public places in counties with more than four active cases. So Shoto County, this means you as well. You're sitting at five active cases. Big Sky Conference football fans will have to wait to get their fix this morning. The league officially announced it will postpone its conference football season to the spring of 2021. The league announced that non-conference uh, play is still pending further review and the Big Sky is exploring modified versions of its conference football schedule in the spring. The league also supports shifting the FCS playoffs to the spring of 2021. According to a Big Sky release, other fall sports will continue to be reviewed with the final decision made at a later date. It's been a long wait for Grizz fans and players in Montana as we waited to hear that final decision regarding the 2020 season. With COVID-19 still very present in our lives, but now that decision to play in the spring. MTN's Jack Ginsburg has more on today's announcement. Obviously a uh, difficult decision for us as a conference. We took a lot of time 
a lot of input from a lot of people, uh, but feel really good about us keeping, you know, again, the health and safety of our student athletes and coaches at the forefront uh, of our decision. Just a few hours after that decision, the University of Montana held a press conference with Athletic Director Kent Haslam, Head Coach Bobby Houck, and two team leaders, Jace Lewis and Sammy Akem, to talk about that move. Our players, our coaches, uh, really probably the entire state of Montana are disappointed and, and frankly probably pretty depressed that we aren't playing and to not be able to go is a really bitter pill uh, especially when you got a team that's uh, as tight as this one is uh, is as well prepared as this one is and as loves each other as much as these guys do it's the first time that grizz football will miss a season since world war ii in 1943 and 44. not only is it disappointing for the players to not have a fall but especially this year with this Grizz group that boasted some impressive talent heading into 2020. We, we put in the work every day. We work hard. We work tirelessly to be able to go out there and do the play the game that we love. So, I mean, everybody sees the talent. I mean, we don't have to tell you what kind of talent we got on this team to know that we were ready and we were going to be ready and we, we're, we're going to be good. I don't know. I've been here, what, five years? And this is probably the closest team we've had, I think, since I've been here. Like everybody gets along pretty well, and we just all joke around and stuff. But I mean, yeah, I was excited. We we're a talented team at pretty much every position. Regardless of the delay, the Grizz say they're ready to rock when the time comes. Patience is a virtue, and right now, that more than any time, that is the most important thing. So we just really need to practice patience and just just know that our time will come. And trust me, our time will come, and we will be ready when that time comes. In the meantime, it doesn't mean football won't happen in the fall, just no games. I hate to even try and guess, but I, I would think there will be some version of spring ball <clears throat> in the fall with a limited number of practices and uh, potentially you know, scrimmages. Could we have some scrimmages, some do some things like that? We want to keep ourselves open to those things, but uh, we're, not, we're not playing Moorhead State, Missouri State, or Central Washington. As the spring schedule sits right now, we could expect to see some games in early March. Still ahead, we get local reactions as campaign 2020 heats up. That story just ahead. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. And welcome back. Well, a state judge in Helena this morning ruled that Green Party candidates should be removed from the November general election ballot here in Montana. District Judge James Reynolds ruled today that the petition that led to the Green Party's qualification in March is invalid. The Montana Democratic Party had challenged the petition. It said more than 400 signers of the petition were improperly denied their right to withdraw their signatures after they discovered the Montana Republican Party secretly backed the effort. Reynolds agreed and said if those withdrawals are honored, the petition does not have enough signatures to qualify the Green Party for the ballot. He also said the state Republican Party engaged in constructive fraud by not initially revealing its backing of the petition drive to gain an electoral advantage. The state GOP says it properly disclosed its role and called Reynolds an activist judge. If Reynolds' decision is not challenged or overturned, five Green Party candidates will not appear on the November 3rd general election ballot, including ones for U.S. Senate, U.S. House and Governor. And it's only August, but the money that will be spent on Montana's high-profile U.S. Senate race is already stacking up in excess of $50 million and from multiple sources. So where's it all coming from? MTN's chief political reporter Mike Dennison gives us the rundown. First, let's talk about the money raised by the two main candidates, Republican Senator Steve Daines and his challenger, Democratic Governor Steve Bullock. In just five months, Bullock has raised $11 million. Most of that money, more than $10 million, is from individual donors from all over the country. 40% of that cash, at least $4 million, is from donors in California, New York, the Washington, D.C. corridor, and Massachusetts. Danes has raised $11.5 million in the past 18 months. That includes about $3 million from political action committees, or PACs, most of which represent business interests. Danes, like Bullock, has donors from across the country, but appears to be getting more of his money from Montanans than his Bullock. Danes has 1.8 million from identified Montana donors, or 14% of his total, while Bullock has only 900,000, or 
Yet those figures don't include money from the pool of smaller donors, whose addresses don't have to be reported. If we assume half that money is from Montanans, then Danes is getting about one-fourth of his total from Montanans, and Bullock perhaps one-fifth. And then we have spending from outside groups that are independent of the campaigns. Already at least $10 million has been spent here, nearly $7 million on Bullock's behalf and $3.5 million backing Danes. The big spenders for Bullock are the Democratic Group Majority Forward at $3 million, the Democratic Senate Majority PAC at $2.3 million, and the Lincoln Project, a Republican anti-Trump group at $1.4 million. For Danes, we have the National Republican Senatorial Committee at $2.6 million and Americans for Prosperity at more than $900,000. And a trio of national heavyweights have lined up plenty of additional airtime in Montana for the Senate race. The Republican Super PAC, Senate Leadership Fund, anywhere from $10 million to $16 million, the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee at $5 million, and the Democratic Senate Majority PAC with another five to six million. So Montana, on this race, prepare to be inundated with TV ads, radio ads, mailers, phone calls, you name it. And here at MTN, we'll be doing what we can to help you sort fact from fiction on this crucial contest. In Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. It only makes sense that we start preparing now to ensure that no Montanan will have to choose between their vote or their health. Well, yesterday was a big day in Montana politics. Governor Steve Bullock announcing that all Montana counties will have the option to expand their use of mail-in ballots, although they will still be required to offer in-person voting. Today, Cascade County Democrats and Republicans reacted differently to the move. Cleve Loney, chair of the Cascade County Republicans, calls the decision quote-unquote wrong and says he's about election fraud occurring, uh, worried about election fraud occurring as a result of the decision. Carl Donovan, past chair of the Cascade County Democrats praised the move and says he has never heard of an election fraud occurring in Cascade County. Rena Moore, uh, clerk and recorder for Cascade County, says the county has extensive experience with mail-in voting and that 82% of Cascade County voters already vote absentee. I really don't trust the system when it's not signatures going to the voting place and not have an absentee where you can compare signatures. I think that it's a great idea to keep people safe, and I've never seen any fraud happen in Cascade County. It is no different than every school election and every city election that we've run for the last 15 years. Those are all full mail ballot elections. And Cascade County does not have an organized Green Party that we could contact, and the Cascade County Libertarian Party did not respond to our request for comment. All right, so last weekend was the first weekend of August. You remember it was hot, temperatures were up into the 90s to near 100. This weekend, a little cooler. I'll have more on the full details coming up right after this. Thanks. Storm tracker weather starts now with Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenance. All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, it is fire season here in Montana. Rick Clark sending this picture, an active shot here uh, from the Lincoln area, the Fields Gulch fire. Firefighters working very hard on that fire and uh, good reaction by those uh, firefighters kind of keeping that fire from really blowing up. There's a lot of dead trees in that area, but how about that? What a beautiful evening outside 59 degrees in Great Falls. Southwest wind very light at eight miles per hour. It's always nice to walk outside after the wind has died down and kind of feel the calm conditions. 50s and 60s here uh, throughout a lot of the states. And there's the wind really beginning to subside. We had some gusts up around 40 miles per hour in Great Falls. 64 mile per hour wind gust in the East Glacier area earlier today. Now, really no issues with any thunderstorms today. The thunderstorms yesterday produced the lightning strikes that may be the cause for some of these fires. Again, we've got that fire up near the Missouri breaks here northwest of uh, the Winifred area. That fire produced a, a pretty good amount of smoke here as a thousand acre fire tends to do and uh, nowhere near the size of that fire here is uh, the Fields Gulch fire to the south southwest of the Lincoln area. But again, 
in some rugged terrain and uh, saw some photos of what the firefighters are trying to hike through. A lot of just down trees and a uh, very uh, difficult situation for those firefighters to, to fight that fire. So there goes one front. Here's tomorrow's front. It arrives a little later in the day, so the wind will take its time picking up, but it will increase once again uh, tomorrow. Looking across the country, uh, we've got fire danger in the west and then flooding back east here. A lot of the east coast inundated with rain here recently, and uh, they don't need any more moisture. Send it our way here uh, because we don't really have much in the forecast anytime soon. Tonight, skies mainly clear and keep in mind too, over the next week, week and a half, the Perseid meteor shower uh, begins to really ramp up here. Should be able to see dozens of meteors per hour depending on uh, sky conditions, but it's mainly clear tonight and so we don't really have a lot of haze or smoke. Tomorrow, partly cloudy skies as that mainly dry front comes through, the wind increasing through the afternoon. Still even a little wind tomorrow night into Sunday morning, but Sunday that wind uh, should uh, settle down a little bit. Far northeastern Montana, uh, eastern sections in the state still may hold on to some of that wind into Sunday afternoon, but uh, there's the wind quiet tonight, but picking up again Again tomorrow through the afternoon, maybe not as bad as it was today, but still some strong winds that could aggravate the fire situation. Look at these lows tonight. Cool temperatures also will kind of help uh, settle those flames down a little bit. Here's the forecast for tomorrow. A dry front coming through a little warmer with uh, the temperatures getting up into the 80s. And again, high fire danger through the afternoon. Sunday, high pressure moves in and Look at this. We haven't uh, had a, a cool day like this in about a month or so, really since the beginning of July, with highs only 71 in Hayes, 72 in Lewistown, mid 70s, a low to mid 70s for Cup Bank and Great Falls. For Monday, temperatures start to come back up into the 80s, and Tuesday, we're back into the upper 80s and lower 90s, but really nothing that far fetched here uh, for August. So, Fire danger tomorrow. Watch out. Please be careful. 81, but enjoy the nice day. Sunday, a great day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're back into the 80s. Only a couple of isolated thunderstorms possible on Thursday, and we could have another cool down down into the 70s next Friday. Still to come, the challenges of trying to fundraise during a pandemic. See how big brothers, big sisters are making it happen. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. The COVID-19 pandemic has presented many challenges for local and national nonprofits that rely on annual social fundraising events for revenue. MTN's Tom Wiley tells us how one organization is adapting to the new norm. 36 teams teed off Friday afternoon at Eagle Falls for the annual Big Brothers Big Sisters Golf for Kids Sake fundraiser. It might seem like a typical event, but during the COVID-19 pandemic, it takes on more importance. We're really excited that we were able to go forward this year um, in, in the full capacity and not have to turn it into a virtual event. A lot of fundraising in the nonprofit industry has really been affected this year by the COVID outbreak. In May, the organization had to alter their signature wine crush event in Helena to a virtual format, but the communities they serve stepped up. We have had to adapt some of our events and think outside the box. Um, and it's a generous community and our donors have still been there to support it. Um, so we're, we're confident that we'll be able to, to figure things out as needed and uh, still, still um, generate the money that we need to support the kids that we serve. And that mission has never been more important. We're finding that at a time like this, it's even more important for the kids that we serve and the families we serve to still have a mentor in their lives. Uh, so some, sometimes we've had matches meeting on FaceTime or using some other online platform. Um, a lot of our bigs have told us that um, it's just had an, a huge impact on their lives and we know that it has uh, just an amazing impact on the kids that they're matched with. Tom Wiley, MTN News. As of now, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Helena and Great Falls is still planning its annual Bowl for Kids Sake event in February. Well, coronavirus has forced many businesses in the U.S. to adapt, but for one, central Montana business expanding and adapting is their specialty. MTN's Isaiah Dunk takes us to Winifred. Welcome to Winifred, population just under 200 and home to one of the most prolific wholesale sign businesses in the Northwest. Mid-State Signs has been around since 2009 and makes just about any kind of sign, from channel lettering and electric signs to clothing. Equipped with state-of-the-art technology and a personalized approach, 
They even do business for other sign companies. When we started the business, uh, it was, the main focus was kind of retail, um, and quickly we shifted into wholesale because uh, we realized that we were having equipment that nobody else had and uh, that fits our needs a lot better being remote. Since 2009, Midstate has only gotten bigger. It now has 10 full-time employees, and you can find their work in Idaho, Wyoming, the Dakotas, and even Arkansas and Ohio. It's also gotten more diverse. In the last two years, it's added a coffee shop and a new retail floor, more production space in the basement, and even three apartment units. And now with COVID-19, there's a new market, face masks. I, I came back to the shop from delivering signs somewhere and I said I hate going into stores with people when they all have masks on because it might be somebody I know but I don't recognize them. I said we need to like print a face onto a mask or something so that's kind of where it came from. And the masks are getting more popular. We're doing them for events, we're doing them for, um, for different companies. Uh, everybody, you know, if you, have, if you have to supply masks for your employees, uh, a lot of companies are having us put their, the name of their company on the mask. Uh, and they might do two or three masks for each employee kind of thing. So we're having orders instead of one or two or three, we're having orders of 100, 200 at a time. With COVID-19 cases continuing to increase, Witchman expects the masks to be part of the plan for a while. In Winifred, Isaiah Dunk, MTN News. Well, a grill focused around Great Falls founding father will be opening up in the Electric City. Owner Brett Haverland tells MTN the former Beef O'Brady's location has undergone recent changes. The new sign is up for P. Gibson Sports Grill and Casino and construction continues. They've dropped the corporate Beef O'Brady's franchise and are now focused on being locally owned and locally branded. We don't have an opening date just yet. Stay with us for the latest updates and don't go away. We'll be right back. A refreshing start tomorrow with fairly light wind, but that wind will increase through the afternoon. Some gusts could go all the way up to as high as possible. Some winds could go as high as about 25 to even 30 miles per hour. Just watch the fire danger tomorrow. Here's a look at the seven day forecast Sunday. What a refreshing August day with highs only in the low to mid 70s. Lighter wind. Enjoy it because the heat is back next week with temperatures pushing 90 by Tuesday and Wednesday. One animal shelter in Michigan is posting these images from a dog's maternity photo shoot. Her name is Jazz and currently she's a resident of the Saginaw County Animal Care and Control. Now the shelter says her pups won't be up for adoption until they're born. Then the family needs forever homes. If you're looking for a fur burby, fur baby, <laughs> we did check the McLean Cameron Animal Center. They have several dogs listed and of course a bunch of cats. The Great Falls Animal Shelter also has a few dogs and a bunch of cats looking for that perfect forever home. Curtis, before you leave back for Helen, you're gonna have to check that out. Oh uh, yes, market on this for a little Friday night. Yeah, Take a few dogs right? and cats home. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the time we have tonight at 10. Good night.